Okay. And then come to any posture recline that feels good for you. I'm just gonna put on some background noise just to keep me present today in the flow. You might not actually hear it on my camera. When it feels good, take your arms wide and open, palms face up. And then start to feel that connection of spine and back. Take a few moments just to see what you need from practice today and set it in the form of intention. And then take both arms overhead and get a nice full body stretch here, whether it's keeping the legs long or just pressing the palms to the back edge of your neck. And then maybe a little lean to one side and just feel length in the ribs. And then lean over towards the other side, just a small lean, similar to when you get up in the morning, that little stretch that you can take. And as you bring your torso to center, draw one knee in, it doesn't matter which one, take a little rock side to side. See what it's speaking to you today, and let's compare it to the other side. So lower that foot down, other knee comes in, a little rock side to side, or maybe rotating through the hip. And then let's lower that foot down, bring the other knee back in. And now I want you to pass that knee from hand to hand. So you're coming through a gentle twist in the core and then passing that knee back. So from side to side. Maybe that thigh comes a little closer into your chest. And every time you switch hands, think about opening up that palm to the sky. So we're not going to the full supine twist, just a little rock from side to side and opening up in the chest as well. And then let's lower that foot down and draw the other knee in. And then do that same passing of the knee from side to side. Maybe starting to notice which side is a little more sensitive today. I don't want to say tighter. <laughs> that might not always be what we're feeling. Maybe one side is just needs a bit more love today. And you know your body's best. Usually for me, it's my left side. And today it's actually my right side. So maybe that's a reminder I've been pushing too hard, working more on that masculine or assertive energy. I don't always like to compare it to feminine or masculine, but we do believe that right side is connected to that go, 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 and that right left side is connected to the nurturing and the slowing down. 
So just start to inquire which side needs a bit more love today. Can't always be fully equal. And maybe just be a bit more aware of that. Take two more breaths, passing from side to side and still opening up in the chest. And then let's bring that foot back to the earth and bring both feet together. And let's see what those inner thighs are speaking in butterfly pose or down angle. You decide where your arms are going to come overhead. If they're going to be long, if they're going to be bent elbows or hands behind the head. Maybe you want to take a mudra, bringing your index fingers together to Kali. Your choice. And without changing up the arms, I want you to just notice what choice you took. So if you just put the arms overhead and palms release, maybe you're feeling a bit more <sighs> or tired today or lethargic and you just want to be a bit more relaxed in that pose. Maybe if you took your arms to cactus, you're working more on chest. And if you took it to goddess, maybe there's some connection there. Maybe there's that reminder of being in your own power. That reminder of speaking our truth, Kali is known to do that. Kali, one of the goddesses. She's very strong energy that even though we might be taking on the physical form as connection of hands, maybe there is another connection there as well for a practice. So you choose and just see where you landed. If it's a heart opener, the cactus, if the arms extending, you feel a bit more soft in that posture, or maybe you're taking that strong body slope. And let's draw the knees in like you're closing a book, and then hug the knees in, massage the spine, rocking a little side to side. Let's come into lower back and core work. So flex your feet, knees are going to stay above the hips. At that 45 degree angle, take your arms out to a T, draw your navel to your back. And see if you can lower the knees over towards the right like a supine twist. So you're using that core to help lift you back up with an exhale, back to center, and then drop them over towards the other side. And using your exhale, Bring it back to center. Do that a few times from side to side. And just that reminder of how important it is to work on that core awareness. I say that a lot throughout practice about draw your core in. So this should be that reminder to slow down. And really ask yourself what our core does for us. We usually connect it with the front side. We forget that it's really that low back that's doing the work. So if you find that you have been practicing more frequently now with these online classes, that maybe that is flaring up for you. I know even for me it has, doing three classes a day. So we really need to make sure that that is our focus throughout practice. Let's do it a few more times from side to side. Core is nice and strong. It's there to support you, it's there to lift you up. Every time I should feel as if you're sucking in that navel to that lower back. And the next time you're gonna drop your knees to the right and roll onto your right side, bring both palms together. We'll open up through the chest, and I don't know if you can still see me on the camera, so I'll move back a little bit. <laughs> Palms together, and then we're going to reach that top arm. We're going to peel it across. Open all the way to supine twist, and then look in the direction of those left fingertips. Pause them together. Bring that hand to the shoulder, reach back across the front of the body. Pass that elbow crease, pass the wrist. Pass those fingertips a little further, pause. And then draw back as you retract. And 
Pause when you get to supine. And then do that a few more times on your own breath. Every time you open that arm, that shoulder should make contact back with the mat or the floor. And the next time that you come back onto your right side, you're going to roll back onto your spine. And let's set up the other way. So drop the knees towards the left. Roll all the way onto that left side. Fetal position. Peeling that arm across. So take it nice and slow with the first one. Pausing when you get there as you extend through that arm. And then bring that hand back across the front of the body. Reach a little further past the fingertips, pause, and then drop it back. You know this now, so try to go up at the same flow, at the same pace, the other side. There's no need to have to fix it on how many times you did on the side and matching it to the other side. Just feel it. Just feel that openness of the chest. Let's do two more reps, if you can. And then when you are ready, lean on that left side. So pull the roll onto that side, extend through your top leg, and then let's come up right, meet in Velasana, child's pose. So big toes together, knees nice and wide, come to that restored pose. Arms extended up. And then start to rock the forehead side to side, massaging that third eye, stimulating that vagus nerve. Let's roll all the way up to the table and readjust hands and readjust knees and lift through your heart, come into cow. Round through your spine, come into cat. Take the knees wide and press back to Velocina. This is going to be our flow of warm up. Inhale, round through your spine, readjust knees under hips, lift through your heart, cow pose. Exhale, rounding again, come into cat. And then press back into child's. Take the knees wide as you do so. So you'll have to readjust knees as you go through this, maybe even hands. Round through your back, come forward into table, readjust knees, readjust hands, lift your heart, arch in your back as you come through cow, rounding through your spine, cat. 
Take the knees wide, press back, child's pose. And let's go and take a narrow child's pose today. We'll do one more together. Round through back, come forward into your table, readjust, lift your heart, cow. Round through that spine, cat. Send the sit bones back, either wide, child's pose, or narrow. Couple more, turn on breath. Every change of breath can be connected with an asana or posture. And if you forget a step, that is okay. Really the purpose here is connection with breath. And if that's starting to feel very much second nature, then start to add on. So the next time you lift your heart to cow, tuck your toes. So releasing the fascia of the feet. Untuck your toes as you round through your back. And press the palms or press the tops of the feet into the floor and the base of the palms into the floor and then press back to child's pose. Do that a few more times with connection of the toes and maybe even incorporate the fingertips by lifting the palms and rounding through to table, lifting your heart to cow and tucking your toes, untucking your toes, pressing the tops of the feet, rounding through the back, and then setting the sit bones back the last time. Couple more again at your own breath. Try to complete one more round. And then you're going to meet in a rest pose, whether it's going to be Balasana or maybe you're going to meet in downward facing dog. And then make your way to the top of your mat, whether it's from child's or from down dog. Hanging up here in your fourth hold. A little rock of the head, no, from side to side. And then finding length through your spine, hands to your shins. And exhale, fourth hold. Rock the head again, no, from side to side. Inhale, finding length. And exhale. Let's walk the hands all the way up the front of the body. Inhale, arms up, look up, and exhale, hands to heart. Close the eyes and reconnect with intention for any purpose for your practice today. All right, let's flow. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive. Half a lift. Exhale, forward fold, right foot steps back, and then our left into a plank. Draw your navel in, make space between your shoulders, press your thumb and your index finger. Press through those heels. And then start to play a little bit here, bring your weight over top of your wrists, and then pressing back. You can always do this from the knees on the ground. You can always lower to modify that plank. So pressing forward and back, if that's too much in your wrists, and come to the knees. And then we'll meet back at center, modify flow, lower your knees, untuck your toes, chaturanga dandasana with control. 
Lifting up to baby cobra or sphinx pose with elbows into the earth. Press back to Balasana, child's pose. Three breaths of rest. Roll all the way up to the table and then tuck your toes, lift up, downward facing dog and walk, pedal through your dog. Then bend to your knees and slowly walk up to the top of your mat to a four fold. Inhale, find your leg. And exhale, four fold. Rolling up. And the last lift. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, four fold, as you hinge the hips. Halfway lift. And exhale. Let's do left foot back this time. Then right. Find that plant form again, press your heels, space between shoulders, navel draws in. Add that little rock, forward and back, finding that edge. So we're practicing going into our full vinyasa. So just a slight movement. Then bring yourself back to center, lower the knees. Untuck your toes, chaturanga, elbows in. Come into full sphinx pose, elbows under shoulders, palms pressing to the earth. Press those hip bones forward. Again, if you find this is still too much of a back extension, you can always bring hands on top of each other, head down, roll the shoulders back, and think about pressing hips forward and squeezing your glutes. We're warming up lower back, or coming to more of that extension. Palms press in, grip into the mat, head lifted. Bring your right knee over towards your right elbow for half frog. Flexion to your foot. Maybe even looking to that shoulder or looking towards that knee. And keep pressing that right hip bone forward. Find length, lengthen that leg. And then other side, left knee to left elbow, half frog. Rotating that hip forward again, look over your shoulder. Then lengthen that leg back long, lower yourself back to the earth, hands and shoulders, press back velocina or down dog. If you're in child's pose, roll up to table, meet in a downward facing dog, paddle through your feet again, and wake up those hamstrings. And then look to the top of your mat, slowly walking up. Inhale, find a leg. Exhale, forward fold. Roll all the way up to stand. Inhale, arms up, look up. And then exhale, hands to heart. We'll reset our practice like we do in our Hatha class. So close the eyes, come into mountain. Palms together or hands can come side by side as Samasthiti. Reconnect with intention. Reconnect with your breath. Sorry, Namaskar B. Slightly heel toe your feet so we can come into Uttakasana chair pose. Reach your arms out in front, palms face down. Shoulders roll back and then sit back into your chair. So if you find that you need more space to support that lower back, heels will be a little wider. Think about inner thighs active, squeezing that imaginary yoga block. Take your hands to Anjali and then sit a little lower. Try not to lean forward with the chest. Put your knee into your heels. It's probably my least favorite pose, <laughs> but I know that means I need to do it, right? Now, because you want to distract yourself from that edge, start to spread through your toes and then replant one at a time. So a little lower, put the castle up. And then find your forward fold. Find your length, send your sit bones back. And then exhale, forward fold. Planting the hands, stepping back to plank. Let's do that play again. Rock forward and back. We're going to come through the full expression of our vinyasana. 
So if you're joining me from the tip toes, bring your weight forward, full Chaturanga Vasana, lifting up through to baby cobra or full leg cobra only if your lower back is ready. Be mindful there. Take two more breaths here. Let's try not to rush our cobra. Tuck the toes in, glide back, down facing dog. Know that you can always rest in the Vasana. Bend into your right knee and then lift your left leg up, step it through to the top of your mat. Right foot's going to come on a 45 degree. We'll lift up to your dress in the A and keep pressing that right foot forward as you come through Warrior A. Embodying that Kali Mudra, bring your index fingers together, knees to the bottom ankle, and then find length. So draw that navel in like we did at the beginning of practice. So length through the spine. Two more breaths here. And then bring your hands down, frame your foot, step your back foot longer, make space, come through the nasa. So step back to plank, chaturanga, lifting up to cobra or up dog, and gliding back to down dog. Hop step or walk up to the top of your mat to a forward fold. Inhale, half and lift. And exhale, forward fold. Roll all the way up to stand. Inhale, arms up to Tadasana, and exhale, hands to heart. Anjana Mudra. Inhale, arms up. Take the palms face down, roll shoulders back, slightly heel toe feet, sit back to chair pose in Tadasana. Navel draws in. So think about pubic bone tacking into chin, so really engaging lower back. Sit a little lower. Find that edge of the arms as well. Reach, 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 but then roll the shoulders back one more time. Bring the hands to prayer, keep spinning. Spread the toes, replant one at a time. <laughs> one more breath here, and then exhale forward fold. Inhale, find it, and exhale forward fold. Plant the hands, make your way back into your plank. Chaturanga Dandasana, lifting up through Cobra, or maybe if you're going to up dog, press the tops of the feet, lift the knees, glide back to down dog. This time you're going to bend into your left knee, lift your right leg up, and step it through to your draw some knee. Back foot is on that angle. Rotate back hip forward, lift up, or your A. Beautiful. Interlace hands, Kali. Drop the shoulders, then find length through spine again. So the back knee shouldn't be locked. Mine wants to hyperextend, so I have to remind myself to micro bend that back knee, front knee above ankle. Your drishti is ahead, so find that space on the wall or whatever is right ahead, or maybe close your eyes for this one. Two more breaths. And then lower your hands back down, frame your foot, make space, step back to plank, finish with the vinyasa, chaturanga, lifting up through cobra, and gliding back down. Walk your hands to the back of your mat to the standing forward fold. Inhale, find a leg, and exhale. Forward fold. You're going to roll all the way up to standing. Inhale, arms up. <sighs> Exhale, hands to heart. Bend into both knees, hands to hips. Transfer your weight into your left leg. Bring right knee into chest. Find length again through spine. Flexion through your foot. And just like we did in supine, can you take that left hand across to that right knee and draw that knee to the opposite hip to your right arm out in front? Or to the side, I should say. <laughs> One 
Now stay here, find your focal point. Add a bit of challenge here for your balance. So bring your gaze towards that left shoulder. That knee stays crossed. Now as you bring your head to neutral, right hand's gonna grab the outside of the knee of thigh. You're gonna open up that knee towards the right side. Bring your gaze towards the right side of the room over that shoulder. Left arm is extended, flexion through right foot. Let's play with that a few times. So bring yourself back to neutral. Opposite hand grabs the knee. Look to the left shoulder. And then this time I want you to keep the knee there and then look over towards the right side. So just playing in that perspective. Balance does not always have to be right from the legs. The balance can also be just in focus. Bring it back to center, head to neutral. Let's do that one more time. Open the knee towards the right. Look to the left, extend that arm. Keep that arm nice and long. Bring your gaze to center. Then look all the way towards the right. You might fall out of it like me. <laughs> then stay here. Bring your knee to center. Cross your ankle over. Coming into your standing lotus. Palms together. And if that's not part of your practice, that you can cross the ankle, you can always come into tree and bring the toes down. But if it's part of your practice, ankle crosses, work that knee towards the back edge of your mat. Make sure you're not kicking that hip out, hips are square. Hands to prayer. Think of this as like your standing pigeon posture right now. That left leg should be on fire. Take two more breaths. Interlace your hands with your arms to Kali. Bend slightly into your left knee and can you come to an expression of your fallen tree and lean all the way forward. Maybe bring your fingertips to the earth. Maybe keep them in Kali. Take one more breath. Lift all the way back up. Use your power of your core. Ah. Exhale, hands apart and uncross the leg. Do a little shake to that left side. That was a lot all on one side. And hopefully I'll remember that sequence on the other side. <laughs> Hands to your hips. Put your weight into your right leg. Bend into that knee and then bring left knee up into your chest. Find length again. So navel draws in. Find that breath. And let's cross that knee over again. So right hand's gonna draw the knee across. Left arm's gonna extend. First, we're starting with the gaze at the center. So once you're feeling that balance here, now you can look over your right shoulder. Bring the head back to neutral. Left hand's gonna grab the outside of that knee. We're gonna open up towards the left side. And then bring your gaze towards the left side of the room. So in the direction of that. Bring your head to center first. Bring that knee back to center. Right arm crosses over. Left arm extends. Gaze towards the left side again. Stay here that leg across. Head comes back to center and look over towards the right side. Playing with that perspective. Head back to neutral last time. Open up towards the left. Right arm extends. Bring your gaze with you. Keep that knee out to the side and then look all the way over towards the right fingertips. And as you bring your head back to center, you're going to bring knee with you across the ankle over. Hands come to prayer. So your choice again. Ankle crosses to standing half lotus or toes to the earth for your tree pose. Keep working that knee towards back edge of your mat. Hips are square. Flex through that front foot. Change up the hands, whether it's back to Kali, interlacing the hands.
and then bend slightly into that supporting leg, bring that focal point all the way down, so you're tracing it down the wall, all the way to that core fold, finding that edge, maybe hands come to here, maybe you're using your yoga blocks, take two more breaths, Power up to that right leg, use your core, help lift you back up to standing, open up the palms this time, and then exhale, lower that foot down and roll through that leg a few times. So that's a lot of work. Let's make our way to table, but from the back of our mat, inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Happy lift. And exhale. Walk yourself out to plank, and then from plank, lower your knees to table, keep tucking your toes, and sit back on your heels. So if you got a foot cramp or any tension in the feet from that last pose, want to release all the fascia there. So toes are tucked, you're sitting back on the heels, a little bit of weight, and super. If you notice any compressions, fine, you know to find length. Take two more breaths here. And then you're gonna bring your hands all the way down. And then to try to cuddle them three to three times, release any tension that we just built there. And then you're gonna scoop your legs out in front. We'll finish with one of our hip openers with seated. So similar to that standing half lotus, bring right knee to your chest, cross your right ankle over top of your left thigh, or bring the foot to the inner thigh. Length through that front leg, find length through spine, lean forward, and then maybe bring your elbow on top of that knee or thigh to press that knee towards the earth as long as there's no tension in the actual knee. And if you feel like you can transition to seated fire law, your next option is to take that extend leg and then bring that heel towards your glutes. Make sure you put the face on so that that foot's underneath the knee and the ankle is above that other thigh. Square your hips up and then lean forward into seated fire law. So you're either staying half lotus or come to a full expression. Two more breaths. Now, as you come out of that, I'm cross the legs, find your fourth pole, and you from your hips. Let's do the other side. Left leg comes with you, left ankle crosses over thigh, or that foot comes to the inner thigh. Finding length against your spine, flexion through the extended leg. The first few rounds will stay here at hot lotus, and maybe that elbow is coming to rest. Then you're going into full seat fire lock, that right heel is going to come to the opposite glute, squaring your hips up again, and maybe leaning forward with that elbow, press into the thigh. Last two breaths here. Rolling out of it, uncross that leg. Hatishwanasana, forward fold, inhale. 
and exhale. You can roll out of that and make your way onto your spine if you want to take a little longer to get onto your spine. Keep your arms out in front and your canoe and draw that navel in back to that core engagement. Do you make contact with the mat? If there's any final postures you wish to take, maybe it's a full supine twist, and crossing one leg over so you get that standing version of it. Maybe it's shoulder stance and a happy baby. Or it's part of your practice. To come into any other postures that are safe to do so. And if you're in supine twist, bring that knee back, and then draw the opposite knee across. And then when you're ready, bring that knee back and join the pursuit kind of twist. Find your expression of Shavasana. <sighs> Maybe it's palms face up like we started practice. And closing the eyes and finding your way back to your own center of heart. Whatever chapter you are on in your journey, please remind yourself to be gentle. Taking that off your mat maybe as a mantra. I hope you will carve out some time this week for play, for joy, for laughter. Whether it's time to listen to music or dance. 
play a game that would make you feel like a little kid again. Without any age restriction or judgment or her personal roadblocks. Take that time to play. If you wish to stay longer on your mat, honor that. If you're ready to move, maybe rock the head, little no, from side to side. Get rid of any pops or cracks in the wrists or the ankles. and rolling on to a favorite side to finish practice. Take a moment here, stillness, and tune into your breath and tune into your heart. See what pace that prana is at now. Is it slower? Is it more even? Feel that heart space fill up with a breath. And on your exhale, pressing yourself up to see it. We'll bring both palms together at heart on the hat side and bow your head down. Taking a moment to accept what we cannot change taking a moment to honor being present. Palms can come up to forehead, lift through your heart. Bring that connection to third eye, Anja Chakra for our intuition, our inner knowing. And to our mouth and our throat, Vishudra for being gentle and kind with our words. And to our heart, Anahata for community connection. And overall, our kindness. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Put a little love in your heart. And namaste. <laughs>